politicians know to beware of an open microphone, but Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell forgot that for a moment while commenting about Arizona Governor Janet Napolitano, Barack Obama's choice for Homeland Security Secretary. Janet's a perfect family. Because for that job, you have to have no life. Janet has no family. It's perfect. She can devote literally 19, 20 hours a day to it. It's just like being an umpire at a baseball game. You do a great job, nobody notices. You screw up. They're talking about Janet's job. Yeah. What I meant is that uh, uh, Janet's a person who works 24 7, just like I do. You know, she has no life, neither do I. To be governor and to do your job well, you can't have a life. Governor Napolitano is one of the best governors in the country. Uh, she works literally 24-7 as governor. She'll do a great job because Governor Ridge told me you have to live that job every minute. Live that job every minute. We are joined by Ariana Huffington, co-founder and editor-in-chief of the Huffington Post, also now the author of the Huffington Post Complete Guide to Blogging. Good morning to you. Good morning. We know that you're not shy about giving your opinion. So, so what did you think about Governor Rendell's comment? Do you think it was sexist? Actually, you know what I thought? I thought that it really epitomized a, a misperception in our culture that if you work 20 hours a day, if you have no life, you're going to be more effective. And I believe the exact opposite. And in fact, on the Huffington Post and in the book, we have a lot of blogging about how you need to unplug and recharge is what we call right. it. That in fact, if some of these Wall Street executives or these uh, auto industry executives had spent more time napping and doing something to bring balance in their lives, they might have made better judgments, which is really the key to leadership is judgment and wisdom rather than being a workaholic. So do you think that if it was a man who was uh, the nominee for that job, that the comment would have been made, the no family distinction would have been made? I think that is really, again, an illusion about um, a woman's life. Like Janet Napolitano has a very rich life. I mean, she plays tennis twice a week and nobody in her staff can interfere with that sacred time. She actually climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. She goes river rafting. She loves movies and the opera. So the idea that because she doesn't have a family and children, um, she's a complete workaholic or that this is a good thing is a real misperception. And we women need to do something to change it because men, yeah. after all, you know, end up with heart attacks or high blood pressure or something in their 50s or 60s just because they have no balance in their lives. You talked a lot about perceptions of women, especially women in politics during the campaign when Sarah Palin was in the news. And on your blog, you openly criticized her. Well, I thought that Sarah Palin, in a way, um, summed up what happens when you're not curious when you're not uh, interested in what is going on in the world. Because my problem with her was really her response to Katie Couric when she was asked, what do you read? And she couldn't give an answer. The problem with Sarah Palin was not anything to do with her being a woman. It had to do with her antediluvian views on creationism, her lack of curiosity, her lack of interest in the world around her. Did you ever think that the, your blog, that blogging would, would be so successful and have such an impact? Well, we've been alive now for three and a half years, and uh, since then, blogging has exploded. And in fact, right now we have a feature on the Huffington Post called Blogging the Meltdown. What is it about blogging that appeals to people so it's much? It's so intimate. It's first thoughts, best thoughts. It's the way you email a friend as opposed to the way you write a polished op-ed or a book. And also right now when people are going through such hard times, it helps deal with the isolation of um, losing a job or your 401k being depleted. And we want to collect all these stories. It's and a release. Blogging is exactly, it's very therapeutic without having to pay a therapist, which many of us cannot afford. <laughs> there you go. And um, in the end, collecting all these stories creates a sense of community. All right, well, congratulations on the Huffington Post and the book. Thank you so much. Thank you.